Want to take a look at the beginning of time? Fire the laser! Anyone who knows me knows that I love lasers. Maybe it's the haircut. Recently, a really interesting laser came online. It's the Laser for Fast Ignition Experiment, or LFEX, in Osaka, Japan. It fires an incredible two petawatt laser beam. That's 2,000 trillion watts. Holy cow, that's a big number. I gotta give you some perspective on that. Okay, in 2010, the entire world's population used an estimated 16 terawatts of electricity. It takes 1,000 terawatts to make one petawatt. That means this laser's output represented more than 100 times the amount of electric power consumed by the entire world in 2010. Yikes. Now, I don't mean to suggest every time they turn this laser on, it sucks down all of our electricity. It fires in very, very short bursts. One trillionth of a second. In other words, this unimaginably powerful laser fires at unimaginably short intervals. So what would we use such a powerful laser for anyway? Well, it's for science. You can actually use this laser to vaporize matter and generate plasma. That's ionized gas, and it makes up the majority of all the observable matter in the universe. That means we can use this for experiments in the lab that recreate conditions that are really inhospitable, like the sun's atmosphere. We can even use it to create conditions that are similar to what was around just shortly after the Big Bang, so that's pretty cool. More importantly, perhaps, this sort of laser can be used to help ignite fusion reactions. Fusion is how stars generate energy. And if we could harness that same process here on Earth, it would create an energy surplus all over the world. And it doesn't create nasty nuclear waste either. The problem with fusion reactions is that stars have advantages. There's enormous gravity and pressure and heat. Here on Earth, if we want to create conditions that are favorable to fusion, we have to pour a lot of energy into the system. Lasers like this might play a part in a solution to that problem. And why stop there? There are already plans at the University of Osaka to build a 10 petawatt laser, five times more powerful. And then there's the Extreme Light Infrastructure's plan to build a high intensity facility capable of firing a laser with a peak power of 200 petawatts. Now, this is not just a quest to build ever more powerful lasers. Lasers can be cheaper and more effective at creating certain conditions that you might use a particle accelerator for. So if you have an experiment that could use a laser instead of a particle accelerator, it makes sense to switch to a laser rather than using a facility that's several miles in circumference. It's a no brainer. Plus, if we ever do crack that fusion problem, the future will be so bright you better bet I'll be wearing shades. All right, I got a question for you guys this week. What future technology would you like us to tackle next? I wanna hear it in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring this show. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that like button. And no, Mr. Bond, I don't expect you to leave. I expect you to subscribe. Then you can watch these videos over here.